Let's be honest, whether you loved or hated your cyberpunk experience at launch, or even if you found yourself somewhere in between, I think we can all admit that the release of Cyberpunk 2077 was tumultuous to say the least. CDPR, the golden child of developers, was now in many eyes no better than their competitors. Formally standing out for fair business and monetization practices alongside the quality and value of their games, they were and are still faced with the monumental task of winning back the trust of people who bought Cyberpunk 2077, only to realize that it was not only marred with issues, especially on last-gen consoles, but also filled with underdeveloped features. But you also can't deny that the foundation of Cyberpunk is filled with possibility, with the team realizing this promise with each patch, tweak, and hotfix. If you haven't stepped foot into Night City, it's a different game than what we got at launch. More features, increased stability, improvements to gameplay, and it even looks better just to name a few. The sentiment of the game on marketplaces like Steam and the influx of people who are seeing these improvements after the Edge Runners lift has been truly amazing to see. But winning back trust is not easy, and to be honest, most developers don't even bother with it. But CD Projekt Red hasn't given up on Cyberpunk 2077 and are taking another crack at it, while also making some core and fundamental changes. At some point, I think CDPR needed this. A wake-up call, a reality check. It's something that we all need from time to time to help us learn from our own personal failures. The real failure is not processing these failures, to let them define your organization, to stick your head in the sand. So today, I wanted to go over an article that I read that shows that CDPR are far from sticking their head in the sand. They're putting their heads down and working hard, largely in silence, to create the cyberpunk experience that they intended. In fact, it was recently revealed by new game director Gabe Amat Angelo that leadership at CDPR has given him a lot of liberties to fix Cyberpunk 2077 and the sentiment around it. There's almost nothing left to lose at this point, and I think that the easing of the pressure might just be the creative boost that the team needs to finally deliver full blaze of glory style before Cyberpunk 2077 wraps up and we move on to Orion. Okay, so looping back to the article, this one is written by GameIndustry.biz and is an interview with CDPR's Mikhail platko Gilewski at the Summer Games Fest. I know we have a lot of Polish subs, so definitely grill me on the pronunciation of this one in the comments below. There's been a lot of negative takes on a certain answer given here in this interview, but before we get to that divisive statement, I did want to highlight all the other good stuff in here. Speaking on the state of the team post-Cyberpunk release, MPG mentions, quote, We know that we had to work hard to come back. It was a tough moment for everyone. We had to rebuild a lot of things inside the company. We started with pipelines on the dev side. We started to think, should we tie our future with a different engine? Or should we stay with our own? We made some big decisions about how we work, how we're structured. It was a big rebuilding. Now, an overwhelming success for Cyberpunk would have potentially led to some complacency in the studio. So the silver lining to the many failures of Cyberpunk at launch was that these questions were started to be asked internally. Revamps are never easy, but sometimes they are necessary, and tackling a fundamental flaw in the workflow, organization, or leadership is the first step to progress. It's funny because CDPR doesn't seem to have issues making the hard decisions, but with investors to answer to and pressure being assigned from higher-ups, Maybe they felt like they had their backs against the wall, and that the final release window had to be honored based off of all the delays. Something was definitely lost in translation here, and communication would have had to be much less fluid than necessary, especially developing a game through COVID. Communication and how CDPR operates internally being audited and refined now is positive for the future of the studio, whether you're a cyberpunk fan, a witcher fan, or both. MPG goes on to say, quote, I was personally not happy with how things turned out. I was not expecting that. I knew immediately that we had to come back. I liked the spot we were in. I'm not talking about the peak of hype, but two years before that. We had our community. We liked them. They liked us. It was awesome to work at CD Projekt Red. After release, it was tough, but I knew that we had the same people. The gamers are the same, we just need to fix our relationship. The only thing we can truly do is just deliver what we're capable of. I have a feeling that soon we will be able to do that and hopefully that will be a new beginning for everyone. Second chances. It's what will make or break CDPR currently. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Hearing him talk about this with transparency is refreshing though, because winning back gamers is not an easy task. When was the last time you can remember your trust was broken? It's not easy to regain that trust, and thus CDPR has a monumental mountain to climb here. 
MPG also mentions in this interview that quote, Cyberpunk took us a lot of time to deliver, and we grew. We need to rethink how we were working in bigger groups, and make sure that everyone listens to each other. And also make sure we empower teams to work on their fragments of the game, but when you combine everything together, it runs smoothly from all sides. We need to empower new leadership and decentralize how we're working. The biggest thing was standing up and saying, we have to do it. Yes, we were expecting a different launch for Cyberpunk, but now we have another chance in front of us. I want to rebuild the connection with gamers, because we had people following us for years and they were disappointed. That's for me the biggest thing, we have to make the game for them. I think we all know the universal acclaim that The Witcher 3 has, but it had its issues on release as well. Bugs, performance hiccups, unsatisfactory gameplay that got tweaked, and the list goes on. So CDPR has experience with polishing a release post-launch. Now obviously this is very far from ideal, but also commendable in its own right, since so many other devs leave even their live service games in the graveyard. The mentality that the work isn't done till the product matches the expectations is one I can respect at the very least. Give creatives liberties, time, and freedom, and I believe they rise to meet those expectations. CDPR has a unique opportunity in Phantom Liberty to right their wrongs and deliver an exceptional add-on package. Cyberpunk 2077 has some of the best writing in any video game ever, a lore and history that is fascinatingly unique, vibrant, and believable, and a well-laid-out city structure that just needs more love. And with the team mentioning that quote, it's hard to find a gameplay system that we didn't tweak, and with new content on the horizon, I think there's a chance that we get more of the Cyberpunk experience that was originally marketed. Three years ago, in the words of MPG, CDPR hit a critical mass of negativity. But the reaction from the team he mentions wasn't to despair, but to roll up its sleeve and get to fixing. He also adds that quote, the process will be ongoing, but the launch of Phantom Liberty will hopefully be the first sign of a studio that's desperate to right those wrongs. Concluding this article, he does also say quote, I actually believe Cyberpunk on launch was way better than it was received, and even the first reviews were positive. Then it became a cool thing not to like it. We went from hero to zero really fast. We knew the game was great, yes we can improve it, yes we need to take the time to do it, and we need to rebuild some stuff. I'm a bit more lukewarm on this answer. I think he's right in that the launch was better than received, but that's for the population of the game where it was functioning. If you were on the PS4 and felt like your console was going to take off, then your launch experience was probably much worse than people who played on a high-end PC. I was pretty positive about the game in my early impressions, and even I got caught up in the negativity as it spiraled out of control. Some backlash was 100% justified, but was everything that was brought up? In my opinion, no. He concludes with, quote, I don't believe we were ever broken. We were always like, let's do this. And I think that's a great statement to end on. I'm very cautiously optimistic for Phantom Liberty. At the worst, we'll be enjoying new stories in Night City, and at the best, Cyberpunk 2.0 will hit all the high notes, and that inevitable complete edition of Cyberpunk 2077 will be held in the same regard as The Witcher 3 down the line. I think CDPR can win back a large amount of trust with their next release. Is it enough to roll back the hands of time to see them in the same light pre-launch? It's probably not the reality, but over time I hope they make their way back and that 2077 gets the send off it deserves, full blaze of glory style. But baby steps first. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in, hope you enjoyed this one, and for more cyberpunk content, do subscribe to the channel.